Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends and today we are going to study a problem number 2 which is based on discrete time Fourier transform that is DTFT. Now first of all we will see the question, what is given in question we will see and then we will move on to solution. So a problem number 2, obtain a DTFT that is a discrete time Fourier transform and then plot the magnitude and phase response of one sequence is given h of n 0 1 1 1 now in this sequence origin value is not mentioned so we will always assume my first bit is my origin value so I'll mark one arrow because most of the time in exams they will give you sequence like this and origin value that is origin arrow is not mentioned so we will first of all we will assume my first bit is my origin value now first of all what is important we are going to apply a DTFT formula on h of n or definition we will going to use and then we will later on we will calculate a magnitude and phase response So this is the definition of DTFT. Now we have only four samples. And the first bit that I have assumed it is origin value. So we will first of all what I'm going to do, I'll break this summation and I'll substitute my n values from 0 to 3. First of all, I'll substitute h of 0 or we can say n equals to 0. So we'll get h of 0. But this n is also replaced by 0 and anything raised to 0 is always 0. Now this n will also replace by 0 and the 0 into anything is 0 and e to the power 0 is always 1. So we'll write only h of 0. Next sample is n equals to 1. This n is also replaced by 1 so we'll write e to the power minus j omega only. Now we will move on to next. We will substitute n equals to 2. So we have h of 2 and this n is also replaced by 2 so we will write e to the power. Now next one. The last sample which is 3 because we have placed a summation value which is start from 0 to 3. So that's why my last sample is 3. The first sample that is origin sample is having amplitude 0 so this whole part is replaced by 0 and next rest of the samples having amplitude 1 so h of n, h of 2 and h of 3 all are replaced by 1. Now from this equation I am going to take e to the power minus j to omega common. So if I take minus j to omega common from this bracket, so what I have got, the first term is replaced by plus j omega, I submit term is e to the power j omega, so I have that I have taken common and the last term was e to the power minus j3 omega and from that I have taken j2 omega common. So I have got this equation. Now what I am going to do, I am going to write e to the power j omega and e to the power plus j omega on one side. Now, I'll multiply and divide this whole bracket by 2. Now, look at it. We have e to the power j omega plus e to the power minus j omega. Well, basically we have one formula which is related to this and that formula is exponential form of cos theta. The formula is cos theta equals to e to the power j theta plus e to the power minus j theta by 2. Now here we have e to the power j omega plus e to the power minus j omega but in denominator we don't have any 2. So we will multiply these two on left hand side so that I can say that my equation will be similar. Now 
this is the equation of h of omega from this equation this part is nothing but my phasor response or phasor part and this whole rest of the part is nothing by magnitude response so we'll calculate our magnitude response of h of omega is 1 plus cos 2 omega and phasor response you can calculate from minus 2 omega now i'll substitute my omega values on both the sides so that you will get the response we have calculated only the values now we will draw the graph of magnitude response as well as a phasor response Now I am going to substitute my omega values that is minus pi 0 and pi in my magnitude response as well as in my phasor response. So first of all we will substitute minus pi in this formula. Now cos of minus 2 pi. Now we have studied one formula. Cos of minus theta is always cos theta which means cos of minus 2 pi is always cos 2 pi. And cos 2 pi is always 1. So 1 plus 1 becomes 2. So my answer is 2. Now this omega is replaced by 0. So 2 into 0 is 0, cos of 0 is also 1 and 1 plus 1 is again 2. So we will write here 2. Now we will substitute pi. So this omega is replaced by pi. So cos of 2 pi is again 1 and 1 plus 1 is 2. So we will have the value 2. Now we will substitute my minus pi 0 and pi value that is my omega value in phasor response. So first of all I will substitute minus pi minus and minus will come plus so we'll have a value plus 2 pi now i'll substitute 0 over here so 0 into anything is always 0 and if i substitute pi then minus of 2 pi will be my phasor response now i'll substitute my omega values and we have calculated this mod of h of omega so first value of omega is minus pi so we'll mark this is my minus pi the second one is zero and third one is pi and from minus pi to pi my mod of h of omega gives the constant value which is 2 so we'll draw a constant line in between minus pi to pi now we will move on to phasor response. We have also calculated the value for minus pi. What I have got value which is plus 2 pi. At origin we have a 0 value and at the end we have a 2 pi which is minus. Now I will connect all these three points and this is my phasor response and this one is my magnitude response. So that's all for now in this numerical. We will study a new numerical in next video. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned to EKDA and subscribe to EKDA for further more videos. Thank you so much.